Chapter 11. Journey to the center of Flatlandia. Hydrating the Matrix with red pill electrolytes. Welcome to the place where nobody has ever left. It's called Flat Earth. Get out of your pod bubbles, globos, and hop on the Z-axis because we're going into the hinterlands of Flatlandia. You'll need a spirit level, a compass, and a good pair of sunglasses. Preferably they live style. You know the type. All bands go on after midnight, opening with Vatican deception, followed by space bubble telescopes, and closing with falling off the edge of the earth. It's going to be off the plane. Let us begin with this fact. If the earth is flat, it's always been flat. Think about that. That means it was flat on set when they filmed Casablanca. It was flat when Genghis Khan stormed across the Siberian tundra with a drove of Mongols. It was flat when ancient aliens built the pyramids. It was flat when you were born, and it'll be flat when you die. On the other hand, if it's a globe, then it's always been a globe. It was a globe before Pythagoras conjectured it may be spherical. It was a globe before the Roman Empire stated that it was a globe, but had never gone high enough to know so. And it was a globe before we pretended to go to space and take a picture of it back in the 1972 image of the blue marble. Picture someone who believes we revolve around the sun. Stone-cut jeans with pre-torn fashion spots, alligator sweater, and the iPhone 12S. The most recent sports update, a clip from John Oliver's Last Week Tonight, or the Roots house band emits faintly from their small white earbuds. Just for a moment, forget that over the last 5,000 years of recorded history, 4,500 of them consisted of cultures espousing a belief in flat earth in one way or another. Forget that you experience every day an optically flat and experientially stationary reality. Forget that. Also forget that the luciferic psyop of heliocentric sun worship was designed by master manipulators aimed at replacing God with globes. Forget all that. After all, it's just a conspiracy, right? Also consider conspiracy means to breathe together. So let's breathe. Now we've conspired. It's 2017 and people still think the earth is flat? Everyone just take a deep breath. Now picture someone who believes the sun goes around the earth, that the sun and moon are the same size, and that the earth is stationary. Someone known today as a flat earther. What do you see? Perhaps an overgrown man-child with spaghetti stains on his gray sweatpants squatting in his mother's basement. Exposed brick walls are, of course, peppered with various versions of maps of the world, boasting lines of twine strung between thumbtacks and newspaper clippings covered in red sharply circling keywords, dates, numbers. For example, Bush 322, 33,000, 1111, whilst predictive programming episodes of Family Guy I blare from the corner of the room like a moaning wail. Maybe something like that? Only trouble is, that ain't it. Let's paint another image, one that is a far more real world shake. It's game seven of the 2016 NBA Finals. There is less than a minute on the clock. It's a tie game, 89-89. NBA All-Star Kyrie Irving has the ball at the top of the arc. He is being defended by that year's MVP, Steph Curry. Irving takes two lion steps to the right, slicing the ball between his legs sharply with each stride. He finds his sweet spot, does a small crossover, coupled with the shimmy, causing Steph to lean in. And just as it looks like he's going to drive, he leans back and ices a three-pointer with 50 seconds remaining, putting the Cavs over to win the ring, an NBA Finals championship. Now, not all flat earthers have a jump shot, but the image is real. Nonetheless, this is an adept athlete, a coherent intellectual, and a flat earther. Beyond NBA rings, flat earth's growing popularity has brought a few peculiar facts to the fore. Yes, facts. And I did say peculiar. I should mention they don't prove a flat earth, but instead raise doubt as to the proof of a spinning ball earth. If you haven't heard them yet, I urge you to consider them, even if you don't want to consider them. All right, everybody, unstick your sticky feet, pull down your ISS feeds, and gear up for a parabolic maneuver in this anti-gravity machine, because you're tumbling into Wonderland and the Mad Hatter is mare. The following anomalies have kicked popular science in the gonads. One, 
Boats don't go behind a curve. When they disappear hull first on the horizon from your eyesight at seashore, instead they simply travel out of your range of sight. A camera shows they didn't go behind a bump because it brings them back into view, hull and all. Two, nobody, quote, has circumnavigated the sphere via a due north-south course. The only way anybody has gone around the world is by heading due east-west, okay? Three, Water does not stick to the exterior of concave spinning objects, let alone spinning objects at a thousand miles per hour. Four, toilets don't flush in opposite directions in different hemispheres. What's true is that the size and concavity of the basin combined with the direction from which the water flows into the basin determines a toilet's spiraling direction to be either clockwise or counterclockwise. Five, planes should have to adjust for changes in earth spin speed. When flying north-south, and yet planes, once they reach their cruising altitude, maintain altitude and velocity. Six, the horizon does not fall away from your view as you rise in altitude, and thus the Earth, at least so far, does not exhibit spherical characteristics at 120,000 feet of elevation. This experience of a rising horizon is inconsistent to the amount of curvature that should be visible if we are on a ball Earth with the circumference of 25,000 miles. Seven, commercial airlines don't fly directly east-west between continents below the equator. Instead, they fly up into the northern hemisphere and then back down into the southern hemisphere. This is because on an azimuthal equidistant map, due east-west flights would take considerably longer. 8. The Earth is stationary and fixed in space as evidenced by a lack of parallax in concentric star circles surrounding Polaris between equinoxes. The purported 300-mile orbit of the Earth every six months around the Sun should cause some degree of parallax, however minute, yet we find none. 9. Oft-touted Greek mathematician Eratosthenes' calculation of the Earth's circumference does not prove a ball Earth. The same calculation is possible on a flat model if the Sun is much closer than we had previously presumed. Now that that's out of the way, let's also chuck out a lot of the conspiratorial debris, such as David Icke's lizard shapeshifters and Nazi secret space bases on the dark side of the moon, or most popularly, the aliens attack scenario, see chapter 5. Please kindly swipe left. Note how all the alien attack scenarios are inculcated upon the psyche of the masses not only via Hollywood, Independence Day 2, The Edge of Tomorrow, World War Z, District 9, but also via astrophysicists like Mashiu Kaku and former presidents Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton. This may provide some insight into the intentions of said narrative. For example, Iron Sky 2, the recent Hollywood follow-up, is an Ikean portrayal of his sci-fi conspiracy propaganda and represents the type of conspiratorial reality they want you to believe in, namely that Nazi spacemen or lizard aliens are coming to get you. You are not alone and therefore are not safe. Either aliens or asteroids are coming to get you, just like they got the dinosaurs, which by the way, probably didn't exist. Yes, dinosaurs are a hoax. That doesn't mean there weren't big animals. It just means that they probably weren't existing 200 million fucking years ago and were destroyed by asteroids. Sorry, kids. I mean you adults. T-Rex is a hoax, and so is Brontosaurus and Triceratops, and that's why all the fossils displayed at the various museums throughout the world are all plastic resin replicas, because the whole thing is fucking fake, and nobody can see the real fossils because they're under scientific lock and key. That's true. Look it up, or just inquire next time you go to the Natural History Museum. Oh, and by the by, Stanley Kubrick encoded this frustration into having falsified the moon landing. Yes, that moon landing. The Neil Armstrong Great Day for America moon landing rather artfully into The Shining, both through the synecdotally titled Room 237, which is the distance in thousands of miles to the moon, and the fact that Danny wears an Apollo sweatshirt whilst configuring with his toys on the carpet a mini NASA launch pad. Also, NASA got its origins as JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is conjectured to have obtained employees from Nazis whom were shipped over from Germany at the end of World War II in an operation called Paperclip. Lastly, shortly after NASA began on July 29, 1958, the Antarctic Peace Treaty was signed on December 1st, 1959, which consists of a collection of countries bound together around Antarctica. All of this happened appropriately just after Admiral Byrd returned from an exploration there and confirmed that it was abundant with natural resources on a televised interview, Chronoscope 1954. Incidentally, the Antarctic Peace Treaty is the longest lasting peace treaty in existence, and it was pioneered by the U.S. in alliance with the United Nations, whom also happens to have a flat 
Earth map as their logo. Shortly after the peace treaty, an operation called Fishbowl began in 1962, which was designed to test altitudinal capabilities. Fast forward to today, well after Neil Armstrong walked on the moon and there is no new American hero, insert Elon Musk and fake XC chapter 10 which pretends to take tourists to the moon, build a civilization on Mars and land rockets in reverse pinpoint accuracy, but just like Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, they promise space travel, they'll sell you space travel, but then they just blow shit up and reschedule. The modern space race is nothing more than a game of who can build bigger dicks faster and then ejaculate them on national television television, a ritual known as launching. Beyond the fact that the US government subsidizes fake X for their space sex, and the fact that NASA has clearly designed a life raft to, to its dying organization in the event of SpaceX, evidenced by their close partnership with the DOD and use of NASA's Launchpad 39A, and serving as the future for the privatization of their ancient heliocentric ritual in Egyptian sun god worship. This is where people cue the tinfoil hat club. Hey buddy, we cued it like three paragraphs ago. But to Despite the naysayers, the Flat Earth is no COINTELPRO, counterintelligence program. The Sphere Earth is the five century long PSYOP. 9 11 is still an inside job, and J. Edgar Hoover was a cross dressing McCarthyist. Meanwhile, Bruce Jenner, the once all American male athletic hero, has become a woman, and this was scripted into an episode of The Family Guy in 2009, far before he ever had a date with the knife in 2015. See predictive programming. Nowadays, Flat Earth, there's no 9 11 was an inside job. We never went to the moon. Sandy Hook. Orlando, San Bernardino, the Dark Knight Rises shootings were all a hoax, and that Warner Von Braun, Niels Bohr, and the rest of the Manhattan Project never secured nuclear potential. Have you seen the footage of the A-bomb desecrating Hiroshima? Ever wonder how the cameras survived a nuclear blast? Of course they did blow shit up. It's just not a nuclear bomb. Meanwhile, they would have you believe in their secret space program and CERN's molecular capacity to alter the weather and change the titles of children's books. See Mandela Effect, they may be able to alter the weather, but whether CERN is really a flea circus ran by a bunch of boys who also enjoy getting drunk in the woods and peeing on trees, see Bohemian Grove, remains debatable. So, all told, are you afraid of the big bad wolf or will you build your house on flat and stationary ground? Some say the infamous implacability of flat earthers stems from the sturdy foundation their feet find upon God's stationary and immovable earth. Others, that they experience it as flat and stationary and that's what counts. Flat earthers do not believe in Sagan's small blue dot or Neil Tyson's pear-shaped oblate spheroid, for we've seen no credible evidence of it, and we know you're calling it a pear-shaped oblate spheroid to account for great and due east-west circumnavigation south of 35 degrees south latitude. Instead, we believe in what we see. That water flows downhill and finds its level and does not adhere to the exterior of concave objects that are spinning quickly. Up is up, and down is down, just as our senses experience them, and there is no artificial opposite up on the other side of the world. Gravity is also unnecessary on our flat motionless plane, and its characteristics can be easily accounted for with buoyancy and density. Planets are wandering stars that do not exhibit characteristics of terra firma objects, and which cannot be landed on. The sun, moon, planets, and stars all revolve around the Earth just as they appear to. Polaris is a fixed pole star ever defining north, which lies at the center of this realm. That's why all compasses point to it. The reason Flat Earth is dangerous is because the privatization of space is lucrative. And should everybody know we can't get to space, it will cease to be enticing. Flat Earth also shows you that you are special, amazing, and unique. And not some germ accident that farted its way from Fish to Mozart. Oh yeah, and the trees, rivers, and sunshine aren't hoaxes, and neither are you. End of chapter 11. <laughs>
Flatlandia. 